TitleMatchNetwork.com. When did you leave in 93? In 93? Um, a variety of reasons, but um, if you know my story, uh, as I tell in the book, it was in 92, right after WrestleMania 8, that uh, I came to the personal crisis in my life. Personal crisis that um, that I'm totally to blame for, and that in being a million dollar man, and being caught up in the, the world of wrestling, and being a star and a celebrity, and riding around in Lear jets and limousines, and living that life, you know, I got caught right up in it, just like somebody else. You know, I mean, I, he was without a sin, cast the first stone, is what they say. Well, I, you know, you name it, I tried it. Uh, and uh, through a personal confrontation with my wife, uh, I had to come to grips with myself and, and reality. And uh, so, what are you doing? And realizing that uh, in, uh, in the name of having a good time, in the name of a lot of self gratification, which is what being a macho guy is all about. Uh, being Mr. Cool and uh, living the lifestyle, that I was risking the things that were truly the most important to me. I was, when I say risking them, it was like uh, with lying to yourself and saying, well, you know, gosh, you know, what they don't know won't hurt them. And, you know, I'm providing well for them. Well, you know, what that really is, is I'll, you're lying to yourself, is what you're doing, because ultimately it's always going to blow up in your face. Um, that old saying, what goes around does in fact come around, is true. And uh, there's another one that says, the truth will find you out. And that's true as well. And in being confronted by my wife on a number of issues, uh, I had to start looking inward. And uh, I, had a very, I had a very strong faith in God as a child, and I lost that. I uh, lost it through the process of becoming an athlete. And, and there's a fine line between uh, being confident and reaching out to be the best, you know, and, and getting cocky about it. And uh, I certainly got cocky about it. I mean, I never mistreated people. I've always been an easygoing, kind-hearted guy, but just that self, you know, image and, uh, uh, playing the games, you know, going out there. So the thing about the wrestling business, you know, one of those things why I don't want my, want my boys there is that you become consumed with that lifestyle and, um, you know, the road can be a very lonely place. And because when you're, when you're out on the road all the time and, uh, you know, you're going to an empty hotel room every night, you're away from your wife, you're away from your children. Uh, and, you know, it's not what so many people think. Well, you're surrounded by all these friends. You're surrounded by all these people who love you. They don't love you. They don't know who you really are. All they know is that character that they see on television. And it's the same for any other entertainer or any traveling salesman. Uh, the hotel and the, and the life in a different town and a city that you're familiar with every night becomes a very lonely place. And then you begin to fill that with drinking. You begin to fill that with drugs. You begin to fill that with... Uh, with women and just about everything else to fill a void in your life. And, you know, thus the high rate of divorce and alcohol and drug addiction and what have you, you know, by the grace of God, I never was addicted to drugs or alcohol, uh, played with all of it. And, uh, but at any rate, in that confrontation with my wife and, and the confrontation with myself, I had to decide that it was time for me to, to change. You know, and uh, uh, you know, and answering your question, part of that is 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 my spiritual journey, and that I turned back to God. I turned back to what I knew as a kid, and what had worked for me in overcoming my father's death and my my mother's ultimate uh, ultimate being of becoming an alcoholic. Uh, I turned back to God. I gave my heart back to Christ, and uh, or should I say, I gave my heart to Christ for real the first time. Uh, and it was a process. My wife and I 
stayed together. I have a wonderful wife who put up with a lot. Uh, and uh, she forgave me. Took two years for us to work through that. Um, but I can honestly say that we're happier today than we've ever, ever been. But in that first year, from 92, like some say from WrestleMania 8 to WrestleMania, through WrestleMania 9, right. uh, I struggled because even though I confronted the problem, confronted, confronted the problems of my life and was forgiven, I still had to struggle through it because, you know, old habits are hard to break. And I had to learn uh, that I couldn't put myself in places where I was going to become vulnerable again. And in many, in many circumstances, in, in some of those areas, I fell again. You know, because I said I wasn't going to, you know, I'm going to stop going to the bars. I'm going to stop going to the strip joints. I'm going to stop, you know, doing this and doing that. But, you know, well, I can still go down to the hotel lobby. You know, I can still have a beer with the guys. You know, and, and one still turns into six. And, uh, uh, you know. So I had to overcome some. What I ultimately realized, though, was that the only way that I'm going to do this right is to get out of here. And what I decided to do was because the at the time the business was okay, but it wasn't great. And I said, you know, the best thing I could do is go back to Japan because I knew that the door was right. always open to me. And I said, if I go back to Japan, when I come home, I'm home. I'm home for a month, you know, before I go back to work. None of this 10 days and three off and four days and three off. And, and I was just gone too much. I realized if I was going to mend the fences at home and really you know, get away from that, I had to get away from it to get all together. And that's why I left after SummerSlam in 93 was... Uh, um, uh, and I know at the time Vince didn't want me to go. Uh, I think Vince was uh, saying it. I think he was angry that I was leaving then because I wasn't leaving when he was ready for me to leave. Right. Uh, but, you know, Vince is never happy when Vince doesn't get Vince's way. <laughs> but, uh, and then there was some silly deal. Uh, I had made the statement, you know, I said something like, man, I finally made it out. Well, that was interpreted as like, I'm finally glad to be out of this horrible place. That's how that got interpreted or how it got back to Vince. That is not the way that it was meant. When I said that, I was referring to, you know, I'm finally out of here. That's a lot of pressure. I mean, you know, to be on the road, you know, all but six days a month in a different town every day, having to be on an airplane, be in a town, get to the gym, uh, you know, the responsibility of war, especially when you're a top guy and you're responsible for going out there and giving your best effort every night, night after night after night, there's all that's, that's a lot of pressure. And the statement, all that statement was, pressure is finally going to be off. Because going to Japan wasn't ne nearly as pressure. I mean, all you have to do in Japan is get on the bus. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you got no pressure. Get on the bus and do your job. You know, and that's all that was meant. Well, you know, that was that was taken the wrong way, and I think there was some some bitterness there. But nonetheless, Vince is a businessman. Um, so that's why I left uh, after SummerSlam in '93, and it was just a couple of months later.